Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with yet another equipment review. This time I'm going to say, this may be your next radio. Strange looking, isn't it? Well, what is it? It is a 10 through 80 CW and sideband QRP radio, 10 watts, out of India. Ashar Farhan, VU2 ESC, has spearheaded this thing on hfsignals.com. Check out the site. It is just over 100 bucks delivered, and it is made by a group of women in a cooperative in India. The entire circuit board is sent completely assembled. You're just gonna put on the volume controls, connectors, put it in some kind of enclosure. Shielding is not absolutely necessary. And boy, this little stinker works. So let's take a little look inside this radio. It's an upconversion double super het design with 10 through 80 meter CW sideband, built in CW gear, and it's designed elegantly and efficiently. I built mine in a quarter inch plywood box, but you can use any kind of material you'd like to work with. Let's take a look at the basic circuit architecture. I'd like to mention first that it uses a pair of IRF 510 inexpensive FETs as the finals, and the bias adjustments are those two blue trim pots on the top. Bias is set at the factory. The radio's brain is the Arduino Nano, a very inexpensive microcontroller. It's mated to a two-line LCD display and an SI5351 frequency generator to form what's called the Arduino. The SI5351 is an oscillator chip which has three outputs and uses a 25 MHz crystal which is subdivided down to the individual frequencies. Lots of people use the little board plus an Arduino and a display to make their own versions of the Arduino. The Ubidex is shipped with a two-line 16-character LCD display, but you can replace it with a blue or black and white display. They're very inexpensive. The Ubidex uses the Arduino with a up-conversion double superhead scheme with 45 MHz first IF and 12 MHz second IF. To keep costs down, eight computer crystals are used in the second IF to form a 2.4 kHz crystal filter, which is used on sideband NCW. The front end uses a 30 MHz low-pass filter, which keeps out FM broadcast stations. The first mixer is a double balanced diode mixer using a pair of BAT45SL diodes. They're already matched and there's no RF amp required because there is already adequate sensitivity at this point and this does not compromise the intercept point. Four IF amplifiers were used and these are a novel transformerless design which have a gain of 16 dB each and IP3s of plus 20 dB. In the first 45 MHz IF, a 15 kHz roofing filter is installed. A TDA2822 audio amplifier was chosen instead of the generic LM386 because it's quieter and only one of its two sections are used. It makes the other section available for hackers in case you'd like to add an AGC to the system. Yep, there's no AGC. Lots of generic 2N3904s are used in this radio. In the transmitter circuit, they're used in pure Class A operation. Four of them are used as push-pull drivers to the final section. After the finals, there's four harmonic filters used to keep the signal clean. And yes, you don't have to wind any of those toroids. These are all pre-wound and mounted on the board. Once you get your radio board into a box and the connectors connected, you're going to need to load some firmware, and you have some options here. The little Arduino has a USB connector on the side, and this board's mounted in back of the display. You'll be hooking up your PC here to load up the firmware. And you've got options here. Of course, it comes with a generic firmware, which will get you up and started. But amateurs have been improving on this, and the two most popular alternate firmwares for the unit are the KC8CDC by Ian and the W0EBW2CTX software by Jim and Ron. That's the one I use, and I'm going to be showing you. Please note that these two guys are producing an upgrade Raiduino board for this unit that gives you cat control and other great features. Now, once you've picked your alternative software, which is what I suggest, you'll need to program it into the Arduino or the Arduino, and you'll need to get the Arduino programming program, which is called its IDE. This compiles the code and sends it to the Arduino. Now, this is simpler than programming memories into most radios with software, so don't be afraid to do this if you haven't done it. Go get the software from Arduino CC. It's free. Install it. Download the new firmware you want from one of these guys I previously mentioned, or a new one, and click on that firmware's icon, and it'll open up the Arduino programming program automatically. Then you just select Compile and Send, and it sends it up to the Arduino, but you do this with the radio turned off and your USB cable plugged into the Arduino. When it says it's done uploading, just unplug the cable from the Arduino, turn the radio on and off, and you're ready to go. 
if you use the W0EB, W2CTX firmware upgrade, like I did, and I suggest, that's one I liked, go ahead and do this calibration procedure. This is the correct way to do it. It's not difficult at all. Hit the pause button on this video, take a picture of it with your camera or phone or whatever, and just follow this procedure and you'll be ready to go in just a few minutes. And here's what it looks like to get into those menus. I added an extra push button in tandem with the main tuning dial's push in feature. This makes it easier. You hold it in, power it up, and you hold it till you see the alignment menu and then rotate that dial. You go through the three settings there. And the first one you're going to use is BFO. Now let's get to the fun part, the UBEDX in operation. The radio even comes with a little condenser element and a micro switch to make your own little microphone with a little bit of hot glue. And it works. Well, there you go. The UBIDX 10 through 80 CW sideband transceiver kit from India. It comes with all the parts you need to make the item except for the box. So you can use any kind of material you want for that. I did add an inline fuse holder. I would suggest that. And I upgraded to a PL259 type of connector on the back rather than the BNC. Uh, you do need a couple of knobs for the front. Look in the junk box. Also, the display just pops out of its connector and you can put any kind of flavor you want in there as far as two-line, 16-character displays. They're all over the net. I ordered a white on black one for three bucks. Should be coming in soon. So I can't really think of a lot of things in amateur radio you could have this much fun with for $100. Of course, two thumbs up for this interesting radio from India. And do remember, when you order it, uh, things from India come on Indian Standard Time. So be patient. Until next time, take care.